when I moved to New York a uh, long time ago in 1980, my very first job out of school was working for a designer here in New York named Massimo Vignelli. I was a kid from suburban Cleveland who had barely traveled, you know, I'd gotten to New York and that seemed like a, a breathtaking, unimaginable adventure for me. Uh, Massimo and his wife Layla are both from uh, Italy, well-traveled, sophisticated people who been around the world, seen things and done things that I hadn't even read about them in books. I knew nothing about that world. I was naive and dumb in a way I don't think it's even possible to be these days. But at their hands, part of the design process for me, part of what makes it really fun to be a designer, is that starting at the lowest level in that studio, through which amazing projects would pass, amazing people would pass, I just got exposed to so many great things It really, for all intents and purposes, was post-postgraduate education for me. I stayed there for 10 years. They function kind of as my adoptive mom and dad. And I think with Massimo too, I sort of learned specifically from him, you know, the impact that a designer can have in the world and the responsibility that goes along with that impact. He was asked back in the late 60s to solve a fairly technical sounding problem. How do you help people get around in the New York subway system? The New York subway system is incredibly complicated. It actually is different companies that were all merged together and had different standards. The signs had kind of accrued to these stations over decades and decades, and the overall effect was chaos. And Massimo and his colleagues were asked to sort of sort that out. Does that sound like an exciting job to you? You know, I want to design record covers for rock bands, you know, and this is like, oh, signs for the subway, you know, what the heck. But Massimo understood that every assignment like that had within it the opportunity to do something of consequence. So imagine that to many people, when you sort of say, what is New York to you? Sometimes what they picture is standing on a subway platform under a sign that says Uptown 456, right? The way that sign looks, Uptown 456, is just as characteristic of what makes New York, New York, as a Paris metro sign is of Paris, as the London Underground symbol is of London. I think Massimo, as an Italian, was able to kind of understand what's characteristic of his adoptive city. So from that experience, I learned that every single opportunity has the potential to be something that might have some impact on people's daily lives for years to come. The internet has changed the way we do design work, you have the option to sort of drown yourself in influence. Back in the day you could just sort of go into your room and come up with stuff and everything seemed original because you only had access to the tiniest sliver of what the world had done up to that point. Now you have a window onto that world which is both illuminating and blinding in a way, right? People used to have some confidence that you could roll out something over time and maybe after a year or two it would sort of start to catch on and kind of be a nice slow build for it. Now people just want to introduce it with a YouTube video and unless the feedback is you know tons of likes and lots of enthusiasm by noon the next day people start to worry that oh we did the wrong thing. One tweet can be retweeted enough times to sort of bring everything down and so a company who's introducing something new, they all of a sudden can put their finger in the air and see whether the wind is blowing in their direction or against them. And it's very unnerving because people's first reaction to things isn't necessarily reliable. And kind of remind yourself what your original goal was and figure out how this reaction plays into whatever that goal was. The earliest known logo, I believe, is the Bass Ale Triangle that's credited as being like the first registered symbol. But think about it, it's a triangle, it's a red triangle. Target, that's a dot with a circle around it. The Apple logo is a silhouette of an apple, there's a bite out of it, that's what makes that tricky, right? These are all really, really simple things. And they're all things that are so simple that I suspect if you came to someone like me and said, look, I have lots of money to spend, I want the best logo in the world. If I came back to you with a red triangle or a dot with a circle around it and said, I've thought about this a long time, here you go, you would say, what? How much do they pay for this? My three-year-old can do that. What people don't understand, and I think some designers don't understand, I think to a certain degree, designers only make a vessel to hold things that have to kind of be filled in over time. And sometimes some of those things are 
Uh, the associations we have with, say, the Nike swoosh, the power that you associate with that just has to do with all the associations that Nike has helped you make with it. Commercial, sponsorship. You know, if you like Nike as a company, you'll sort of take the goodwill that they've generated and deposit it right into the vessel they created for it, that shape, right? You know, there's nothing inherently wrong with the swastika. It was a good luck symbol for years uh, up till the rise of the Third Reich, you know? And then suddenly, in one fell swoop, it got associated with something so evil that most people would say it's just unrecoverable. Those, those angles, those shapes, that color combination now has an association that cannot be separated from it. So none of those things are sort of necessarily inherent there to begin with. They just acquire those things over time. And so I think the challenge with logo design if you want to make something that endures, you almost have to err on the side of simplicity, and that takes an enormous amount of confidence. You have to realize that you're not actually trying to come up with a finished product you can put an OK stamp on and say, done. Instead, it really has to be, you know, when you see this thing, we hope you associate it with some of the things we're going to be doing now, tomorrow, and uh, as long as our company endures, this mark will endure to kind of capture your positive feelings about what we're doing. And I think that that sort of is a, it's a tough challenge, and it took me a long time to really figure out, to a certain degree, how little control anyone in the delivery room when that thing's being born. People are trying to run that baby for president, and it's just a newborn. It doesn't know nothing, and we don't even know really what it's going to look like when it grows up. And thus it also is with symbols and logos, too. I've never set up that way before.